first, you're the first, you're the alpha, maker of the earth. By your word, by your word, you created life out of the dirt. Because you hold the world inside of your hands, you can move mountains.
Hey everyone, welcome to Church at Home. Hey guys, uh, we're so glad you're here with us wherever you're tuning in from. Could be a car, could be a bedroom, could be a yard, could be a bunker somewhere. <laughs> we're here wherever you are. <laughs> and a special welcome to anyone tuning in for the first time. Uh, we'd love you to introduce yourself in the comments, let us know where you're tuning in from, and we would absolutely love to meet you. Yeah. Um, and also for everyone else, we want to know, how are you going? How are you staying sane and entertained in this season? <laughs> I mean, six weeks is a long time. Can you just comment with some stuff of how you are entertaining yourself? Yeah. We've seen some funny ones online, we have. haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> I love this one. Someone said, I'm just putting tiny food portions on a very large plate and pretending that I'm at a fine dining <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> so accurate. I Always disappointing. Like, well, $60 for <laughs> that. <It's not>. Right? <laughs> Uh, I've, I've heard one where it's country theme night. So I love that. Uh, different nights of the week, you dress up as you know in Indian, and you have Indian food, and you're watching Indian show. All it's about good that. Idea. I love that. I'm, I might get a moustache and do Mexican night or something. <laughs> I love that. Um, we also saw someone said, "Put up your Christmas tree, decorate it, and then just put all the packages that are arriving at your house <laughs> under the Christmas tree." <laughs> you could put it on your porch and then just tell the delivery you know, in the notes. Just leave the package under the tree. Under trees. the Christmas tree. Yes. And then it's like Christmas. You'll feel like Santa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I feel it is particularly hard to feel connected in this time. Yeah. I feel like you're a part of a community and not just kind of doing life on your own. Uh, but we want you to know you, you on the screen behind me, uh, we're, we're praying for you and we are here for you and we are in this together. Yeah. And I may, it may feel like a small thing participating in the service and getting involved throughout the week, but it can go a long way in feeling that you are a part of something, that you're part of this community. Yeah, yeah. but you can participate uh, throughout this service by praying with our prayer team, by encouraging someone uh, that you think is great, or maybe today's the day that you decide, that you, decide you want to give. Um, mm. And there's so much to be thankful for in this season as well. Um, and even when times are hard, we're called to be people uh, who remember God's goodness mm. and remember His faithfulness and to choose to respond with thanksgiving. Um, and one, one way we, we can show gratitude is through our tithes. Um, so for some people, we're able to give out a regular tithe or a, a reduced tithe. And uh, for, for others of us, this, this is a really hard season. This could be your time of receiving. Um, this could be a, a season where you need to be asking for help. And for the rest of us, it's our tides that are gonna be able to help those people who are in um, a time of need. Um, and so, yeah, we, you can give, you can encourage, and you can get prayer by the links in the details. That's a really good point, Jacob. I love that. Yeah. And hey, you can get involved throughout the week as well. Um, Church is well and truly pumping. There's stuff happening all the time. So um, you can join a life group for this season if you're not already in one and journey with other people throughout the week. Uh, you can get amongst the move sessions that our active team are, are doing. They're amazing. My butt was so sore after I did one. <laughs> How good is uh, Simone? <laughs> Oh, she's, she's so amazing. Like, how she do you do that? Yeah. Uh, and you can hear about all these things and stay in the know by following our socials and signing up for Church News. Yeah. Uh, and next we have a really cool shout out video. I love Let's this. Let's check it out. Hi, everybody. I just want to give a quick shout out to all of the God Zone leaders at, at God Zone and for organising the fun pop groups on Sundays. And I ha I'm having fun learning about learning about God. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, that was the cutest thing I've ever oh, seen. I so love cute. that so much. Girls, you are amazing. Thank well you so much for sending that that shout out in and you spoke so beautifully. Yeah. Um, and on that, I want to also just add my encouragement to the God's Own team because mm. it is so hard to engage kids online, yeah. especially when they've been at school all week and you yeah. guys are doing an incredible job. So we just want to say thank you so much uh, for your hard work and the creativity that you're showing in that. Yeah, well done, guys. And you guys message us your shout outs on Facebook, Landscape. Uh, yeah, we love to encourage people and we love seeing your lovely faces. This could be a good excuse to put pants on. Yeah. Although Same don't video. feel pressure to put pants on if you don't want to. <laughs> Just as make sure you, you film from... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can even shoot it in your jammies yeah. if you want. Um, hey, next up, Marcy is going to continue her thoughts on coming back stronger and it's going to be so powerful. Yeah. Hey, but first, uh, let's give a response of praise and gratefulness to God in this season mm -hmm. uh, for wherever we are. Uh, let's worship with Him um, with our whole selves this morning as we sing together. Can't wait. Let's do it. Welcome to Church at Home. Why don't you stand to your feet wherever you are and come and join with us in worship too.
Welcome everybody to Gateway Church at Home from our lounge room to your lounge room. We're so honoured that you would choose to spend this time with us and I hope it blesses you. We're uh, in this series on staying on the plus side and uh, we've, we've been asking this question of how do we stay on the plus side of life, especially when life doesn't look particularly positive. The bottom line we want to we want to talk about is that when we are intimately connected with our God, we find it so much more natural to see the goodness in life, even in the middle of of difficult times. And I've been using the analogy of coals in a fire. You know, Jesus came to set us alight for His purposes, and we can only retain the heat that we need by staying close to his presence. I spent many hours talking to gateway people um, who lost their heat, the passion for God over, um, over time, and some just sort of slowly drifted away by getting out of the habit. They just rolled out of the fire. And last week I shared stories of some of our friends who went through such dark experiences that they just jumped out. There were some common denominators that I learnt in all of those stories and I promised last week that I would share them with you. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So uh, seven quick thoughts or seven quick learnings um, that I found from listening to these precious people. And then I want to share another story from a gateway guy and this is a story of incredibly resilient faith and then I want to leave you with two visual pictures that I feel that God gave me. So let's jump right in. Seven quick thoughts. Thought number one, resilient faith is often seeded in childhood. You know every one of the people that I spoke to when they when they recalled their darkest moments they also remembered that at those times, stories would come to them 
stories and truths from the Bible that were taught to them either in, um, in Sunday school classes or by a faith-filled adult in their life. The greatest thing we can do for our kids, I think it's to imprint their young souls with the knowledge that they are loved unconditionally by God and that he created them with a purpose which is far, far greater than just their own happiness. You know, I love our kids' ministry. There's incredible fruit for the kingdom that comes from our kids' ministry. But for some people, that fruit is going to take decades to grow. I love the story that Mark Reynolds shared that um, when he was going through some dark times in, in, uh, when he was part of the motorcycle gang, it was stories that he remembered from his Sunday school days as a young child that came back to him and eventually helped to lead him home. Thought number two, God is a relentless pursuer. The stories I heard of how God just gently wooed people back, were they just warmed my heart. You know, he was always there, always whispering his love until that broken-hearted person was ready to hear. I loved Kerry's analogy of, of feeling like she was deep, out in, in the, the water and having to swim back to the shore and, and feeling herself sometimes almost drowning and, and the waves coming over her. But in hindsight, she knows it was God that held her up and helped her to breathe through all of that time. I love that parable that Jesus tells about the shepherd who leaves the 99 to find the one. He is a relentless pursuer and he will not give up. Thought number three, God delights in giving second chances and thirds and fourths and, and, and. The way that these broken people were lifted up and placed back on their feet and given a purpose in life just shows me some of the character of God. We shouldn't be surprised in the New Testament we read that the incredible story of, of Peter who was who was Christ's right-hand man and at that moment when Christ really needed him, when he was arrested, when he was um, before the courts and being charged of, of, of terrible crimes that would lead to his crucifixion, when he really needed his friends, Peter denied that he knew Christ and ran. But then we have the stories that happened after Christ was resurrected and he made a point of seeking out Peter, talking to him, forgiving him, not, and letting him know not only that he still loved him, but that he had an incredible job for him to do, which was to lead the beginning of, of his, his precious church. I'm sure that Jesus knew that the humility with which Peter would come through this experience of failure and forgiveness was just what he needed to make him the man that God could rely on to build his church on. Thought number four, church community is essential in the healing journey. So often the brokenhearted person prayed that God would show up and so often God answered that prayer through the presence of a godly person, whether it was an invite to have a coffee or a meal, an invite to be prayed for, or an invite to come to church. Or, or it was godly people who were keeping that the, the house of God so vibrant and authentic that when broken people walked into a service of worship, they, they met God. Um, straight away. Don't ever doubt that Jesus came to assemble an army who would band together to change the world. Yes, made up of individuals, but single coals cannot burn hot on their own. Thought number five, God often uses wounded people in the most powerful ways. You know, I think God does his very best work in us when we walk through darkness, when we are forced to rely on his strength and his alone. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament, he went through some, some really horrific experiences, 
but he said that he, he gloried in his weakness. He said, when I am weak, then I am strong. Because it was, he knew that only then that it was Christ's strength that could shine through him and not his own. When we walk through pain, we have the opportunity to bend and change and learn and grow more into the likeness of Christ. Oh, that I could remember that when I'm going through tough stuff. Number six, we must learn to lament, not grumble. What's the difference? A lament is a passionate expression of sorrow. A grumble is complaining about something in a bad-tempered way. Now, in the Bible, the Bible is actually full of laments. Um, one example in Psalm 44, you've got, you've got the psalm to, uh, complain, well, not complaining, lamenting to God and saying, but you've turned your back on us. You've walked off and left us. You've rejected us, tossing us aside in humiliating shame. And it goes on for verses and verses where he's just pouring out his sorrow to God. And it seems that God welcomes this honest expression of grief. But grumbling is not welcomed. Why is that? I think it's because we lament in humility, but we grumble in pride. A grumble starts with a hard, proud heart. A grumble says things like, how dare you do this to me, God? Or how could you let this happen to me? I'm a good person. I have served you. A lament is when we humbly admit to God how desperately lost and sad and alone we feel, how we don't understand what he is doing. We don't understand why he is allowing this to happen to us. But there is an acknowledgement in the lamenting that he is God and we are not. There's an acknowledgement that we don't have his perspective and we can be like Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he was crucified, who even Christ lamented and said, please take this cup away from me. But then he finished by saying, not my will, God, but yours. And my seventh thought, transactional faith will never lead us to the plus side. What do I mean by transactional? Transactional means if I do this, then you will do that. If you are a Christian, if you're a follower of Christ and you have this expectation in your life that because you've given your heart to God that life will be rosy, you are setting yourself up for disillusionment. Ariane, one of the Stories we heard last week admitted that as a young Christian, she followed the rules. She read through the Bible twice, which isn't bad for a young 14-year-old. But when she was viciously attacked, she said, if that's the way God treats his friends, then I want nothing to do with him. You know, Christ never promised us a life without suffering. How could we ever expect that when the author, the beginner of our faith, our example, was cruelly tortured to death on a Roman cross? We are his followers and he calls us to follow him into suffering as well as into glory and happiness. The promise we do have from him is that he will never leave us, never forsake us, that when we walk through suffering, he will be right there with us. A friend of mine, Helen from Queensland, she, she told me about losing her son to a, a drug overdose when he was 21. And she was so angry with God for a long, long time. In a deep prayer time many years later, she was taken back to the night that she was physically crying over, over her son 
and accusing Jesus of deserting her. And God gave her a vision in that prayer. And in that vision, she was finally able to see that rather than an empty room at that dark time, that Christ was sitting there right with her, weeping along with her. I said I would share another story with you. Mark and Sally Ansell have been our friends and co-leaders of Gateway for over 30 years. Mark's got a story to share. Mark, we've, uh, we've been in leadership in this church for several decades and as uh, we've walked through some really dark, dark times together. And uh, 10 years ago, you lost your beloved only son, Cain, at the age of 28, which was, I think, probably one of the darkest times for me. And that's all I can, and I can't even imagine what it was like for you and Sal. Yeah. yeah, it was, uh, as you well know, Marcy, it was a very tough time for not only Sal and I, but for, our, for Kane's sisters, uh, who loved him dearly too. Uh, the context was Kane was, um, grew up at Gateway, really, and uh, everybody knew him. He's a great, great young guy. Um, that's what everybody else says too, so I know that's um, fairly accurate. He loved people, people loved him, and unfortunately three weeks out from his year 12 exams, he uh, experienced his first psychotic episode. And so for the next um, 11 years, we had to deal with uh, um, deep mental health issues that were very, very um, painful and draining and traumatic for the family over those 11 years. And so as a family with Sally and um, myself and his sisters and his wider family, uh, you know, the leadership team, we just quietly did our stuff and 90% of Gateway wouldn't even have realised what was going on. That was fine. It was only because everybody else had their own lives to get on with. So we battled that for 11 years um, right up until he was 28 and then Kane took his own life at the age of 28. So um, so the battle had started 11 years before really. So when I think about it um, and then uh, he, he took his own life uh, in a very public manner um, when he was 28 and left a wife and a gorgeous little uh, daughter. Um, so that's Mark, where was, where was God for you in that, in that terrible, terrible time? Yeah, I, he, he, was, he was right there, Marcy, in, in that I can remember saying uh, very clearly um, right at that time, I remember just saying, God, you've, you, you've got to be here. You have got to turn up now. You have to turn up now. And he was there. But I was just laying it on the line saying, you've, you've got to be right here with me right now because I knew in those minutes um, of getting the news that I had a choice to make uh, for myself. Um, and so I was already making a choice. So I wanted him right in, in the pain with me to walk me through the pain because I said, God, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be bitter. You know, I, but walk with me in this, this journey that we've just um, the worst of the worst of the worst has just happened and we've just found out about So I asked him and he turned up. He turned up and uh, right there in that situation for me. So, so yeah. you know, that's 10 years. We were just saying nearly 10 years since Cain died. Yep. I mean, that's still 10 years of, of pain. Oh, absolutely. How have you processed it through all that time? Oh, lots of tears, lots of tears ongoing. Um, even on the weekend was his birthday, so uh, lots of tears that um, no one sees, and that's fine. That's that happens in any family where they've lost a loved one like that. Uh, and I do want to say at this stage, Marcy, before I go any further, I do want to say, um, you know, my experience was I asked God into that situation, and uh, He met me right there at that crisis point. But other people that at the pain so immense and so traumatic for them, I can understand that they walk away. Uh, for a little while or for a long time like that, um, you know, I, I certainly empathise and appreciate that pain level that people go through when they just say, you know what, I just got to check out of my faith. I, uh, but I just at that point was able to just say, Lord, you got to walk with me through that um, and keep going. So that year afterwards uh, and for many years afterwards, the fog um, it was hard all the time, um, good birthdays, anniversaries, uh, memories. Um, Many, many, um, for years, 
people will walk up to me at supermarkets um, as far away as Mentone, right down to Rosebud. I had people walk up to me and I want to talk about my son. And these were not gateway people. That's what blew me away. Mm -hmm. It helped many people over the years. So that it kept kept coming back to me when I really was trying to bury it somewhere. But it was God's way of saying, hey, you know, um, Cain did a lot of good in his time. Um, Mark, you could have snapped and broken. Why didn't you? That's a great, great question, Marcy. Um, I think, no, I know because of 11 years of traumatic uh, experience for myself and the family helping Cain, I just had to rely on God. So the things we've talked a lot about, the spiritual disciplines of, of just prayer and reading the word in the morning, um, just spending time with God, allowing him to minister to me and the family, uh, really sticking close with Sally, um, really helped. Um, staying in, staying in the, the habit, the spiritual discipline of corporate worship, you know, just, just helping other people. We're all good. Good things um, mm. doesn't take away the pain, but it did help me to go. You know what? There's a lot more to life uh, at this time of, of just just trusting God day by day, uh, mm. in amongst the tears and the pain, and, uh, yeah, just the rawness of life. It's a powerful story, isn't it? And through all of these stories that I've I've heard over the last couple of weeks. I believe God's given me two pictures that I want to share with you. First one is a stick. This is the way many of us feel when we've gone through hard times, dry and brittle. And when, when things happen to us, when we have this transactional faith that says, well, we've lived this way so God's got to treat us in a certain way, when something bad happens, we snap. And then, of course, what we do after that is we try our best to heal ourselves. But what happens when we try and heal ourselves? We think we're okay, but we will always snap at the same spot again. You know, God doesn't want to just fix us. He wants to totally remake us into something beautiful and fresh and new, that's pliable, that can bend, that we, we don't have to have all the answers, but, but we have this ability to just bend with the uncertainties and the difficulties and the greyness in life. The Bible talks in, in uh, Psalms about being a tree planted by the water and having that ability to just bend. That's how God wants to remake us. Not like this, but like this. The other picture he gave me is that God calls us to walk with him through suffering, but he is also in the redemption business. Suffering is part of our Christian walk, but so is peace and joy and healing, if not in this life, then in the next. So I think what he's calling us to do is to be able to carry our suffering, and I'll use this sort of barren stone as, as a symbol of that, carry our suffering and our joy and promise, one in the left hand and one in the right and know that both of these are an essential part of the Christian walk. But let me just take the analogy a little bit further. Any philosopher will tell you that life is going to be full of dark times and good times. But for the Christ follower, it's not just a matter of waiting till this is over so we can see this. With Christ, he can make the flower bloom out of the barrenness. He can bring them both together in this beautiful analogy. He can take the dark times and use them to grow us into something beautiful. 
I wanted to finish with a, a favourite quote from Rob Bell, who was referring to a mentor of his who showed him Jesus. And I want to dedicate this to my friends, Mark and Sally Ansell, and to the many older saints of the church who have watched the miracle of painful stones blossom into beautiful flowers. He was a man of faith, deeply grounded in his convictions, and yet those firm convictions didn't close him down or harden him or make him brittle and close-minded. They had the exact opposite effect. They seemed to make him more flexible and limber and engaging. Like a tree planted near water with deep roots, a storm comes and the tree doesn't break because it's grounded enough to bend. Regardless of what you've been through, regardless of what you're going through right now, Christ is there with you and he's for you. You can come back stronger. Marcy, that was so beautiful. Mm. Let's pray, church. Jesus, thank you for the miracle of your constant presence that you have promised never to leave and never to forsake us. God, we thank you that you are a God who is available all the time and that your arms are always open to bring peace and comfort, especially in the darkest moments of our lives, those mm. moments we feel we can't go on, Lord. God, we, we just pray for the people who feel like that broken stick that Marcy was referring to, Lord, that have maybe tried to mend themselves or, or fix their failures and, and just feel like they, they just can't go on. God, I pray even now as we pray, as we speak, that you start to remake them into something fresh and new. Yeah. Lord, that you take their roots down deep so that they can be um, a reed that sways and, and bends mm. in the storms of life, Lord. And God, may we rest in the knowledge that you never waste a hurt in our lives, that mm. you can bring good out of every and any situation, Lord, that you wanna restore us and bring us peace and joy and wholeness. Lord, thank you that you are always leading us towards that wholeness and that joy. In your precious name, amen. Mm. Amen. What an awesome morning. Oh, so good. Yeah, and shout out to Pastor Mark. Missed <sighs> seeing his face, seeing him. his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what an incredible leader we have in him. Yeah. yeah such a man of depth. I love, Look, I love all the Ansels. They're spectac a spectacular yeah. family, but yeah, we are missing you, Mark. And hey, don't forget that there are things happening throughout the week um, that you can, we, you know, we think you'd love to get involved in yeah. and that you can enjoy. So make sure you do follow us on socials and sign up for church news and all the details are in the description and you can stay up to date with everything going on in the church fam. Yeah, we'll see you all next Sunday, 10 a.m. For Church at Home. Bye.